What's up guys, Charles from Team COG coming at you guys here with the Glad AR Beast deck profile. I uh, took this thing to locals at the same local Shane went undefeated with with uh, Utopic Zexel. Like, uh, luckily enough, I didn't even see him. I ended up getting fourth place. Um, I was actually convinced to play the deck without Bow of the Goddess here because I didn't have mine yet. So I played without Bow of the Goddess. I played without Al Mirage. I played out with a bunch of, um, kind of a bunch of cards. So it was in a testing phase, so... I'm going to tell you guys what I would play instead, but uh, the main deck should be 40 cards. There's a few cards I'm missing that I'm playing instead of the ones that I want, and I will play in some cards I'm not even playing because I don't have them, but I will let you know the changes that I want to make. Uh, the deck is a combo-eccentric deck. Any two cards get you to Test Panther, which Test Panther is busted. Uh, it's one of the best support cards this deck has gotten in a long time. And yeah, it's, uh, Glad Beast has always been a deck I've wanted to play, and ever since I got the new support, I've decided to dive into and slowly pick them up. And now I have the deck done, so yeah, so without uh, further ado, uh, before we continue on to the video, remember to check out our sponsors in the link down in the description below. If you guys want to get an awesome playmat like this, check out Affidian Games and Accessories. But if you guys also want to build your own Glad Beast deck, check out Game Times Cards and Collectibles and pick up the Glad Beast cards they have from there. I can get you 10% off there and 5% off on the mat, so yeah. So without further ado, let's just jump into the deck profile. Uh, we're playing... Uh, three Gladiator Beast Andal. This is the best Glad Beast in the deck. Uh, so like you want, you don't mind seeing this card in your hand, but every other Glad Beast in your hand is a dead card. So it's just kind of it's kind of strange. It's uh, you play a lot of bricks um, in your deck. However, since I do play Test Tiger, uh, some of the best worst Glad Beasts are not so bricks in combination with Test Tiger. Uh, that's why I play Test Tiger. Um, but Andal is just the vanilla that you get off of Rescue Rabbit. It's a uh, there's just so many two card combos with Andal plus like um, Monster Reborn, Gladiator Comeback, uh, Rejection, Unexpected Die. Uh, there's just a lot of combos revolving around this guy here. So yeah, not much more to say. Moving on, we play. I play two Augustus uh, because I know some builds play three, and I tested at three. Three is not good because you like the more without having like we don't play enough Gladiator Beast to play Gladiator. Gladiator Respite, I think that's the name of the card, is the draw card for the deck. So when you open up multiple big guys in your hand, or you open up like too many of these guys in your hand, you uh, find yourself, how do you say, you find yourself uh, breaking a lot because you need extenders. You don't need to open these guys in your hand, you need these guys to be in the deck. So by playing three of those, you maximize on them. I did tinker with three, and so many times I opened two of them, and that's like, just two dead cards in my hand. Uh, but however, though, do note if you can eventually get one Augustus out, you can get all three of them out because Augustus is not limited to summoning himself and he is not once per turn. But he is a key component into making your uh, Tamer Editor, which allows us to pretty much auger paint out negates. So, continuing on, we play one Darius, my favorite Glad Beast in the entire deck. Darius is your Satellanite Altair. When this is summoned off the effect of a Gladiator Beast monster, it summons back another monster, but its effects are negated, which is kind of which stinks, but it's an old card. Um, it is just beautiful. I love it. He's my, he is my all-time favorite. Uh, this guy right here is what allows you to make like an instant rank four. And uh, yeah, he just allows you to make an instant rank four under Test Panther if needed for like Dweller, um, Tornado Dragon. He's just really good in that aspect as a rank four toolbox that allows us to have access to. I'm not playing double or nothing because as you guys have seen my videos before, I hate playing one of bricks. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, but it's a necessary evil. However, this is a necessary evil I didn't have to play. So I avoided opening, hard opening, uh, double or nothing. And if you guys have watched uh, MST TV's video with this deck, he ended up breaking on the card twice. So that's, that's enough for me to move away from it. But one Darius. Uh, one Beast Yari. Uh, Beast Yari, there's a cool like little three card combo with Beast Yari that involves Test Tiger. And uh, it can involve like Rescue Rabbit, Test Tiger. I don't know, I think it's just Rescue Rabbit and Test Tiger actually. Uh, you Rescue Rabbit, summon Test Tiger, summon this out via Test Tiger's effect. You pop a back row, then you can contact a million to Gazar and pop two more back rows. It's essentially those two cards, pop three cards. Uh, but uh, do note this card is mandatory. So like whenever this guy does come out, you have to pop something. If he is summoned by the effect of a Gladiator Beast monster, his effect has to trigger, and he must destroy something, whether it's your spell in back row or their spell and back row. Excuse their spell and traps or your spell and traps, or the, it just doesn't matter. Um, however, he's a good way. Like I didn't want to not play this guy because like he is a way to the hard make Gazarus, which sometimes you need in a simplified game state, which is really important to push through uh, simplified boards. Um, not to mention that 
Gazarus, you just are able to loop Gazarus multiple times, pop up to six to seven cards, thanks to Bestiari as well. But yeah, that's it. I'm moving on, we play one Khajiit, a Torix here. Uh, this card just foolishes from extra deck or deck um, to become the level. So it's a way for you to make Tamer Editor. It's really good. However, this is something I wanted to note with. You always want to see this card in your hand. It's just, it's a strange like aspect of the deck. Uh, that you want to see this card in your hand, but you do not want to play more than one of it because you don't want to brick on it because, yeah. Um, however, though, there is a combo that I did notice that did come up that I need to make sure I pick up is Almirage. Uh, you pretty much, like, if you open this guy in your hand, and this is the only Glad Beast, but you have, like, Glad Beast Comeback or Monster Reborn or World Legacy Succession, you can normal summon a Torix, link it off into Almirage, and then use the, re the uh, Recursion spell, the re Reborn spell, to bring this back, and then you have the full combo in the Test Panther. Uh, it's just something to take note on. You just always want to have this in your hand at all times. Uh, moving on, I'm playing one Vespesis. Now this card is uh, should not be in here, but I've learned to like it. Uh, the reason you play this over a third uh, Augustus is because this guy can special summon himself whenever you attack. So going first, he's not that great. But however, it just it doesn't even when, it doesn't matter when you attack. It's just when a Gladiator Master battles. Yeah, when a Gladiator monster battles, you can just special summon this guy, which is extremely important, uh, especially when going second, because sometimes, again, you want cards that equal Test Panther. So, like, if you open Darius, and, like, the, you just normal summon Darius, enter battle phase, attack something, and then when you uh, battle something, you can summon Vespasis, and then during the end of the battle phase, this will shuffle back, summon out something else, and you have the full combo. Um, it also is another target to send off of a Torix, uh, so that the level meets the requirement. However, going in the future, I probably wouldn't play this guy. Um, I probably would actually put in a quest, to be honest with you. Um, however, like you, like you, you do need three high-level Glad Beast monsters in your deck. Um, Augustus is just too much. I've even thought about playing uh, Noxus. Noxus would be a good card to play because is, he is a foolish burial, which sets up plays with uh, Darius. But Vespasis is what I had access to at the time. And yeah, uh, I'm just kind of iffy with it. Uh, you do need to play three high levels because in the case that you do open to Augustus, your entire like deck strategy is dead unless you're able to get Augustus out of your hand with comeback and then shuffle it back with Panther, which is very possible, but it seems to be like beating around the, uh, beating around, uh, making extra steps and beating around a big bush you can't beat around to do something that would be simple as just not playing a, by playing a third target, so. And then he has like a cool effect where all Glad Beasts get a certain effect. This is a misprint one that it was pulled without the lettering, like the lettering was all messed up. Uh, probably another reason why I'm playing it. The everything gains 500 attack. All monsters you control gain 500 attack at the end of the, yeah. So when Vespasis comes out, he get everything gains 500 attack, which makes your Glad Beast even bigger, which makes Domitianus 500 or 4,000, which is crazy. Um, for the last Glad Beast I'm playing, I have been testing one Sagittari. I know some people are just going to look at this card and be like, it's bad, you don't want to play it, blah, blah, blah. Um, however, I would actually play that and a quest in sense. Um, uh, the reason this card is bad, it's not a level four. That's it. This card says draw cards. Um, this card says summon me out when you open a handful of uh, glad beasts, that, the bad glad beast. Discard and draw and get free cards. Draw into one of your five <laughs> monster reborn spells. Draw into a rejection. Draw into... Um, hand traps draw into an impermanence that's what this card says and um at first i was kind of iffy on playing it because i'd like you i've seen no one play this card and uh i really wanted to play it and uh a quest would be like the little uh to be the uh the horse brothers the little centaur dudes uh, but i didn't have access to a quest which i hopefully will in the upcoming week because i'm pretty much going to order that and a war chariot but uh sagittarius is actually very underrated um, some things I've noticed, like with uh, Rejection, Gladiator's Rejection, uh, you need different monsters. And so the card that you're going to be special summoning the most is going to be Andal. So that's a Beast Warrior. And then you have the Khajiit, which is a Beast Warrior, and Darius, which is a Beast Warrior. So you only have three. If you're not counting this uh, Vespestus here, you pretty much only have three other main deck monsters that are not Beast Warrior. And if you open any of them in your hand, it makes things difficult. And sometimes like you don't want to link off with the BCR, you want to keep it in the deck to summon out. So like playing Sagittari, which is the winged beast. And I think a quest is a winged beast as well. He might be a beast warrior. 
but Sagittarius just allows you to summon himself off of like Test Pencer's effect, or even in like the Bustin Hands with Test Tiger, you can summon out Sagittari, ditch like a bro ditch a card in your hand, like ditch Augustus, draw two cards, draw into a spell, link off into um, Test Panther, bring back the uh, Augustus, and then shuffle back the Augustus. It's just the ability to re it just the recyclability of Gladiator Beast's toolbox is really needed. And I just really like Sagittarius for that aspect. It allows us to draw. The card says draw two by discarding one Glad Beast. And like I said, any Glad, Glad Beast in your hand that is not um, Andal here is a brick. Um, the only other card you want to keep in your hand is the Khajiit, which is a Taurus. You want to keep the Khajiit in your hand because all these guys are bricks. So like these, if they're in your hand, you just pitch them. <laughs> you can pitch Bestiari, draw two cards. And then if you really need to get Bestiari back in the deck, you can do that. So. Uh, that's why I'm playing such Atari, but uh, this guy right here, I'm still iffy on it. Like I said, he might, he will either become a, uh, a Noxus, depending on like how testing goes, or he might even become um, a Quest, even though it would go, it would kind of drop down the line, but yeah. But one such Atari, I've been really liking him. I highly request testing him out and just let me know. The biggest downside to him is the level. If he was level four, he'd be just even more busted, but continuing on. Uh, two test tiger. Uh, a lot of people don't are only play one, but I really enjoy two. Uh, his other effect very seldom comes up, but he allows he, any of your glad beasts here plus tiger is full combo. Um, it makes opening. Let's see here. Let's see here. There we go. It makes opening. And I guess this got you. It makes opening any one of these four guys, which are normally bricks in your hand, full combo. So like, you normal summon Sagittari, you special test tiger, you have test panther. Uh, it's just really cool. And then in cool inter interactions, when you're able to rescue Rabbit out going second, or like going first, when you're able to rescue out two Andals, and you can have um, Test Tiger in your hand, you can summon out the Test Tiger, tribute the Test Tiger, shuffle this back, and then bring out Sagittari to discard and draw two cards. Or you can bring out Bestiari, pop a card, and then Contact Fuse and Exarus and pop two more cards. So like, Test Tiger does have a lot of utility in the deck. And the secondary effect very seldom does come up. However, you do have access to it, which in certain scenarios is really good. It's just, this is another one card extender that allows you to get into Test Panther. I really like it at two. I don't think I'd ever play three, um, but however, I do like the card a lot. So maybe if I were to play in like a scrubbier format, <laughs> I maybe would play three, but uh, two is the perfect ratio in my opinion. Uh, moving on, we play three Rescue Rabbit. Rescue Rabbit, as you guys know, uh, this deck has two has two card combos, three card combos, and with Rescue Rabbit, we have one card combos. Um, however, do take note, um, by combo, I mean ways to get to Test Panther. Um, Rescue Rabbit is a one card Test Panther, which is very important. However, Rescue Rabbit plus like a Reborn spell is like full combo into a Domitianus, and then a uh, Rescue Rabbit plus two Reborn spells, Dom uh, Rescue Rabbit plus Rejection and a Reborn spell. You just get like the combos just go on and on, which is one reason why I like this deck is like no matter what you do, you have multiple combos to get you to the same thing. Whereas it's not like up in the air, like you're not drawing eight cards with Sarayuja or four cards with Sarayuja, and your combos are just depending on what you draw. You have a linear or a straight route of combos that you go through. But Rescue Rabbit, you have to play it. That's why Andal is the most important Glad Beast in the deck uh, because you can just beam it out with Rescue Rabbit. However, I will say this, as I've always said with cards like Rescue Rabbit and Rescue Cat, this is high risk, high return. If you commit your normal summon to it and then banish it and ash it, your pretty much turn's pretty much over unless you have the ability to follow up with like Unexpected Die and Rejection, which is also an amazing, which is amazing opening. If you see Rescue Rabbit, Rejection, and Unexpected Die, you're pretty well uh, set. I've played through and made Test Panther with Unexpected Die and Rejection, and then been able to, uh, they've ashed my what did they add? They did something and then I just normal summon Rescue Rabbit and just made a rank four, which is pretty good. Um, there's just different ways, like that three card combo I just told you is just a way to like play around multiple hand traps, which is extremely good. So three rabbit, moving on to the hand traps. We play triple ash blossom. It stops everything. Uh, sometimes though, like I've noticed that you'll end with Ash Blossom and Heraclinos. It's sometimes easier just to overlay the Tamer Editor and the Heraclinos into Hope Harbinger so you can keep the Ash Blossom. Uh, however, though, like, sometimes, like, you gotta remember these things are also considered disruptions. So if you open these guys 
and you're able to make like Domitianus and like Heraclinos or Domitianus and Hope Harbinger, you essentially have three interruptions instead of just two because of Ash Blossom. Uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, but sometimes like on your Simplify boards with like Tess Panther, Domitianus, and then Tamer Editor, you have Ash Blossom. It's just really good to back that board up with that considering Domitianus is just a hell of a card. It's really powerful for what it does. But moving on, we move on to our spells. Uh, before you go on guys, I'm gonna go and tell you, like I said, um, the only things I would change would probably be the Vespastus here, and I don't know what I'll change it to. I'm gonna probably test with Noxious and probably test with Equest. Um, I might even put in Equest and Noxious just because, yeah, just because I you kind of I I just want to test with them. And uh, there's certain spell lineup that I can potentially cut that I'm testing as well that can make room for them. But like you don't want to keep the count high, so like I said, might cut down Vespastus for a Noxious. I just do do think you need to play two higher level five or higher. Glad three level five or higher glad beasts in your deck just because like if you open two of them or you open one of them your combos are not like fully dead if that makes sense i'm moving on to spells gladiator proving ground uh this card is not searchable off of a uh, test panther believe it or not because it doesn't have gladiator beast name this is your rota for the deck this is what, how you get andal a torix maybe you maybe like you open this and just test panther or test tiger so you need to get this to get to a normal summonable monster which is all right, so that's any level four lower uh, Glider Beast monster from your deck to your hand. Uh, if you were to tell me that you were going to search the card, the, the monster on this, I would say you're crazy, but that's kind of like the decks evolve now. So it's like you search, mostly search the card, the and all that's on it. Moving on to three Monster Reborn, Glider Beast Comeback. This card is not once per turn. It has a restriction. You can only special summon monsters that are a different type than the type you control. So that's also a reason why you want to play so many different types of Glider Beast, because you're always going to have pretty much a Beast Warrior. So you're going to want to be able to special summon something different, which is Wing Beast, Sea Serpent, Wing Beast. So like you want to have the ability to summon out something different. And that just, you know, it's just a low cheat that this deck can do that people don't really pay attention to. So, I mean, just if you play it, make sure they're doing that. Then we move on to three rejection. Three rejection is really busted. So I saw a guy, I think his name was Rogue Scrubs or something. He wasn't playing this card. Uh, given at the time, like, um, there was better options for us. But now that the ban list has dropped and we've lost, like, the, the Ib combo, which I was going to show you guys. But that's also another reason why the deck took so long was because they banned Ib. And that was a main point in the combo and majority of the cards. So I kind of lost a lot of things. But a uh, rejection is just pretty good since Gladiator Beast cannot be targeted. When a Gladiator Beast monster is special summon, special summon a different type from your deck. So like it's, like I said, unexpected die plus this is like the full combo. Um, it protects you from targeting, which comes up in that locals. I wish I would have had this because I played a Cyber Dragon player and he just gobbled up Domitianus after baiting, baiting the negate. So I mean, if I would have had this, it, this outcome could have potentially been different. But however, it's not a Gladiator Beast card, so you can't search it through Test Panther, so. Then we play three unexpected die, just another way to get to your combo, summons the handle right from the deck. Um, nothing more to be said, this plus Rescue Rabbit is also pretty crazy, this plus uh, Rejection is pretty crazy, and like I said, Rescue Rabbit plus Unexpected Eye and Rejection is just totally nuts. Uh, if you guys want to see a combo video, let me know, I'll do like a full combo video, I'll even do like a full test hand video, but yeah. And then triple Call by the Grave, you have to play Call by the Grave. We are a combo based deck. If they Ash or Imper if they Ash, Ogre, Valor, or Cast Panther, we pretty much lose. Uh, so we have to have some way to counter it. Now going on to one ofs. We play one Eagle Booster and one Hornet Drones. Uh, Eagle Booster, I think you should play, probably would bump up Eagle Booster just because like you summon Test Panther and most of the times there's nothing down here. So you ask Test Panther's effect to search, they'll Ash it. You just chain the Eagle Booster and then Test Panther's unaffected. So you don't have to worry about any sort of interruptions coming at them i'd actually even bump this up like i said guys like sometimes you want to see this in your opening hand just so you can for sure the test panther to resolve uh hornet drones not much to be said about hornet drones i know that engage is dead but like the, like hornet drones like many people have argued and it's been proven that you almost always play the one of hornet drones even if you're not playing engage because it is such a powerful one of uh, hornet drones plus any any um glad beast is full combo so yeah so like i think i just bump up eagle booster or I might just cut the engine completely and play in, um, play in a quest or, you know, like, like I said, these are like some cards that are flexible. Uh, moving on, one reborn, one succession. So succession was in here due to the Ib combo, Ib combo, but now that we've lost it, I've just kind of kept it in there and was testing with it. 
and it's pretty good except for the fact of in those games where you open um, any of your uh, gladiator beasts that's not like a torix or andal it's not too good because you can't link into it so that's been kind of the reason i wanted to cut it and especially if i'm going to add in a quest i'm going to need to get rid of it for potentially quest even in like this is a flex spot too like you don't need this you don't need to play this but it is nice to have but uh yeah, like Succession only has really good synergy with uh, our Torx or a Rescue Rabbit because like if you normal send a Rescue Rabbit and they hit you with Impermanence or Effect Dealer, you can just link it off into All Mirage and then Succession it back and then resolve the effect. But yeah, that's it for the final two traps. I'm playing two Impermanence because like I said, like this deck does not have a lot of inherent draw power, which is also another reason why I like playing Sagittari. Uh, the deck has zero inherent draw power if, unless you're going to play Respite, and I think Respite is more of a brick than it is anything. If you're going to play Respite, play it at one. Uh, Sagittari allows us to draw into more cards, and uh, since the deck doesn't always have access to Sagittari or any draw power at all, you need to open these cards so like you have some form of interruption. Uh, that's also why I do, like, again, this is good that we're here at Impermanence, that's also why I support playing Sagittari, because when you side deck, you need, it's pretty much your opening, you get the draw, or your opening hand, or bust. Uh, Sagittari just allows you to draw into your side deck options a little bit quicker. Um, with that being said, um, in the trap lineup, I do want to add a War Chariot, because Test Panther can search the War Chariot, and there's just so many hands that I played at the locals where I opened up full combo plus, like, the extender I needed, and I had to I used Test Panther to search off another comeback that I didn't need. So like having the ability to search off a counter trap to back up your board, or like when like you read your hand and you can tell like your ending board is just gonna be simplified. So instead of searching what you need, you can search off the, uh, so instead of searching off um, just like an extra comeback that won't do you anything, you can search, um, which comebacks always lie, but you can search off a war chariot, which you can set on your simplified or like weaker boards that pretty much solidify them a little bit better. But uh, that's it for the main deck. I do believe it's 40. Um, I could be wrong, it could be, it should be 40, uh, but like I said, I plan on adding in Noxus or an Equest, either one of those two, I plan on adding in a War Chariot, so those are changes that I'd make in the upcoming once I get them, uh, but moving on to the extra deck, now, there is some changes in the extra deck I want to make as well, and I'll go over those as we get into them, but uh, to Test Panther, uh, Test Panther is busted for this deck, guys. Like, on summon, add any Gladiator Beast card from your deck to your hand. It can be monster, spell, trap. And then once per turn, essentially, you can target a Gladiator Beast monster you control, shuffle it back, and summon out a Gladiator Beast monster with a different name. And this is treated as, a, as being summoned by a Gladiator Beast monster. So, like, it procs everything. It's, it's so good. The only complaint in the artwork to me, I love the artwork of it. It's just beautiful. Um, the only complaint I have is it's low attack. But other than that, really cannot complain. Uh, moving on. We'll play it. We'll go through the Gladiator Beast. Uh, one Tamer Editor, one Gazarus, one Domitianus, and one Heraclinos. So I would actually play two Tamer Editor moving forward because they have comes up times when you overlay it. And then like in turn three or four, or depending on your turns, you need to make another one or you can hard make another one to, to uh, pop out Gazarus. Uh, but to explain to you guys real quick what they do, Tamer Editor is essentially Guard Dragon Augur Pain. It lets you summon any Gladiator Beast monster from your extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. Uh, Gazara says, whenever this card is summoned, destroy two cards. Domitianus, which is like the main, we'll go like this. Domitianus, which is the main guy of the show, is a monster effect negator, and he controls the battle phase, which is really important when you combine it with the Goddess Bow, because you can get your Goddess Bow pretty weak. So normally, once you get down to like two negates, they can just pretty much normal summon a monster and whack over it. Well, with Domitianus, you're, you're able to protect the Goddess Bow which is really important. And in certain matches ups, just being able to turn the attack to Domitianus is really powerful. And yeah, um, Heraclinos here. Heraclinos is your spell and trap negator, as long as you have cards to discard. Um, sometimes, you, most of the time, you're not gonna have cards to discard, which is unfortunate. Or the cards you have to discard are like Impermanence and Ash. So like, you don't really wanna discard them. So most of the time you use Tamer Editor and Heraclinos to overlay into Hope Harbinger. Uh, but essentially for going first, these two guys are your negations. Going second, you're just ripping boards apart with Gazaras, which is another reason why I like this deck is because it's not so dice. It wants to go first, but it can also go first or second. It's not so dice roll. We have plays for first and second, essentially, is what I'm getting at. Um, but in this lineup, I definitely would add another Tamer Editor. You kind of, in my opinion, you need to play two Tamer Editors just because of how, for the grind game, essentially. And uh, yeah. And like I said, this is a combo deck. So like you sometimes are going to make mistakes. And uh, sometimes if you abuse the tamer editor and don't have another one to go into you can just lose the game due to your mistake so by having like a contingency plan of playing two editor you'd be able to um 
you would be able to continue on with your plays and not just lose the game because of your own misplay because you use the one tamer editor up. Uh, moving on, we play one Phoenix, one Unicorn. Uh, so essentially, um, I really, and like one of Team Sounds video, he uh, used Unicorn as a stepping stone for Appaloosa. And I didn't really like that because I want like you, you, you miss the utility for this card to spend something back. Uh, same with Phoenix. Um, essentially, Phoenix, there is a cool thing that you can do going second, that you can just put Tess into here, make Phoenix here, it's co-link, dis dis you can get rid of a back row, draw a card, and then you can link these two up in Appaloosa. Uh, it's just, it's an option that's available. But I really, um, these two are just pretty much tool, like you make, you can easily make link threes and link twos in a stack. It's pretty easy to be honest with you. And like I said, you can co-link the Nightmare Phoenix. Uh, but I didn't, I play also like, I think Deco Talker because I didn't want to like, just not utilize this. It's like powerful effect as a stepping stone just for Appaloosa. So I, I really wanted to have the ability to use this. I didn't feel like going into this, not using its effect to make Appaloosa was just a waste. I'd much rather go second and go into this guy and spin something back and then make Appaloosa if that makes sense. But yeah, Nightmare. Uh, Link Spider. Link Spider is really important for the Andal plays. Like even if you open two Andals, it's, you still have full combo thanks to Link Spider. So, yeah, nothing more to be said. Deco Talker. Deco Talker is the card that you would um, pretty much go into instead of a uh, unicorn than to make your Appaloosa the goddess bow. Um, take note, though, like, even Deco Talker is pretty powerful in the sense of, like, you put Domitianus here and uh, Tamer Editor here, and then, like, you have the ability to protect from targeting and stuff like that. So, and it's pretty big after that. I think it's at um, 3033 or something like that. So, yeah, keep that in mind. One $100 card that shouldn't be $100. Appaloosa the Goddess Bow. Um, you have, I thought you'd get away with not playing this. And you can, but it's not worth it. <laughs> in the sense, um, you need to play this card because your ending combo is this guy right here. House is three to two of your own negates on top of like the five or four negates you're able to put on. So she's just super powerful. And like I said, thanks it's with Domitianus here, being able to control and manipulate the battle phase. Even if you get her down to only 800 attack, they're still not going to be able to attack over because of Domitianus being out. Uh, nothing more can be really said about her. She just fits in the deck really well. You have her. And then we play One Hope Harbinger. Uh, you need to play this guy because when you go into Tamer Editor the second time, you use Tamer Editor to bring out Heraclinos. And if you don't have enough cards in your hand to discard or you don't want to discard, you just overlay these guys into Hope Harbinger. And then you have another way to manipulate the battle phase. Uh, with that being said, for the last ranked forward player, I'm playing Tornado Dragon. I expected Pendulum to pop up in my locals, or B Heavy Back Row to pop up in my locals, and it didn't. Uh, this could easily be Dweller. Actually, I'll probably change it to Dweller. And, yeah, um, it's not a complete extra deck. Like I said, I'd add in a... Let's see here. Let's count it real quick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So it's pretty simple. Add in another Tamer Editor and All Mirage. There you go. You have your full extra deck, in my opinion. But like I said, guys, my list is not saying you have to. My list is only up to uh, your personal, whatever you want to do. Um, but anyway, yeah. So feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Comment down below if you're if glad you're a veteran. Let me know what you guys are playing and your opinions. And uh, yeah, this is Charles from Team COG signing out.